We want to talk now about the materials that we need for doing the E12 protocol, uh, as well as the specimen preparation. The specimens uh, will be frozen to facilitate uh, cutting on the bandsaw. So we'll freeze uh, a minus 80 uh, centigrade freezer. Uh, the specimen, uh, which will be either a fresh specimen or can be a fixed specimen. If we fix a specimen, we use only formaldehyde, no additives. And so we'll take a frozen specimen and we will slice it on a bandsaw. And of course, uh, it's best to have uh, protective eye covering uh, when we uh, use the bandsaw. Uh, we will put the uh, appropriate size piece on the bandsaw and we will uh, make slices. Each one of the slices will be placed on a grid and uh, we use a polyester or a plastic grid of some sort, but we put a fly screen cover over it, put the slice on, uh, the, on the fly screen, and then we can add another fly screen on top of the slice, and then we will add another plastic on top to make a, a sandwich uh, and repeat on top. Uh, the, the, this gives support to the specimen. Once we have the specimen uh, prepared, we may choose to scrape the uh, sawdust off of the specimen uh, to make a better looking specimen. And then the specimens, uh, the, the stack of specimens will be placed in the uh, box of acetone for dehydration. The dehydration will take place over a period of one week, uh, changing the acetone uh, one time. Once the acetone uh, has uh, removed all the fluid from the specimens, then we will take the specimens out of the acetone and we will put them in uh, uh, epoxy mix, uh, submerge them in epoxy mix and place the box of specimens and the epoxy into the vacuum chamber. For vacuum, we need a vacuum chamber. We need a way to regulate the vacuum uh, and, and monitor the vacuum. We monitor it via a, a manometer. Uh, and we then regulate the um, pressure by uh, closing the uh, valves that are in place in our system. This is our vacuum pump. The vacuum pump will produce uh, vacuum, uh, one atmosphere vacuum, and we, we lower that vacuum by, uh, or increase the vacuum by lowering the pressure by uh, closing the valve uh, so that more air is pumped out of the system. And eventually, as our vacuum goes down to almost uh, one atmosphere, down to about 10 millimeters of uh, mercury. Uh, the bubbles will have begun to cease. We will shut off the pump. We will, after one day, we'll shut off the pump and we'll open the vacuum um, chamber. We'll take out the specimens uh, on their grids and bring over to a spatial uh, glass plate the glass plate, the glass plate is, will be covered with uh, foil, uh, with, um, yeah, foil to keep the plate clean. And the covered plate we'll put here on the, the box. We will choose then to uh, put a large foil on top of the glass plate. Each um, each specimen will be placed on the plate on top of a little bit of uh, epoxy. The epoxy will be a small amount of epoxy placed on the, on the foil. And then the specimens will be placed one at a time on the foil. And um, more epoxy will be added on top of each specimen. Um, then we will get another foil. and gently put down on top of the specimens. 
and the epoxy that is there. Then we'll use a uh, tongue depressor to carefully make the polymer uniform over the specimens and to remove air bubbles off of the specimens. Much like this. Then when that is prepared, if we have more specimens, we can put another foil on top, more specimens, more epoxy, another foil, and uh, proceed the same way. And then when we're all done, we will wrap this whole uh, package in um, foil much like this to keep the mess all together in one place and then we'll take the package and put it in the oven.